If this component is a diode, it lets current flow in one direction. To be specific, it lets current flow in this direction. And if you try to make current flow in the other direction, the resistance will be very high and it won't let the current flow. Okay, this light emitting diode is the exact same thing, except when it's conducting, it lets uh, it emits light. Okay, so for example, if the current is going this way, it's going to glow red in this case. But if, if we try to make current flow in the opposite direction, it won't glow and it won't even conduct, it won't let the current flow through. Okay, let's see if the current can flow in this circuit here. So current flows from positive to negative. So in this case, the current is going to go around like this. So as you can see now, it won't let the current through because this is not in the direction of the arrow there. So the resistance of the, um, the diode can be considered to be very high. So there'll be no current flowing anywhere in the circuit and the bulb won't uh, light up at all. So all I have to do to make this circuit work is flip the terminals of the diode around. So it turned it around. So now the current can flow and the bulb will glow. And it's the exact same with LEDs, except LEDs will also glow when they're conducting, like in this case right here. That is in the same direction as the current flow, so the LED will glow and so will the bulb. Okay, so I can use this circuit to study the current and potential difference characteristics of the diode. All I have to do is change the resistance here, and if I change the resistance there, it will change the voltage and current through the diode, and that I can plot on a graph. If I plot that on a graph, it looks a bit like this. So as you can see, in the negative direction, when I connect the diode the wrong way around, the resistance is very high, so the current is zero. And once it's connected in the correct direction, it doesn't actually start conducting straight away. See this over here? Yeah, there's no current until you get to approximately 0 0.6 volts. And then it starts to conduct. Okay, at that point, once it's starting to conduct above 0 0.6 volts, it's actually quite got quite a low resistance and it's quite a good conductor. Okay, and, and just if you wanted to know, the IV characteristics can be plotted with a potential difference on the y-axis and the current on the x-axis and Again, we'll just look up like this. Okay, the 12 volt battery in this circuit is shown has negligible internal resistance. The diodes have ideal characteristics. Calculate the current through the battery. So what do they mean by ideal characteristics? Basically, that just in saying that the uh, diodes have very low resistance so that we can ignore the resistance of the diodes. So we're trying to calculate the uh, current through the battery. So the total current, in other words. So if we look at the setup here, so the current is going to go from positive to negative. So it's going to go around this way and down this way. So as you can see, it won't actually go through the top branch. There will be no current in the top branch because if the current tries to go that in that direction, the diode will have very high resistance. So there's no current in this branch here. However, current can flow in this branch and we're going to assume that the diode has zero resistance. Okay, that's what we mean by ideal. In other words, the total potential difference will just be across this resistor. So the current in the circuit will just be through the bottom branch. So it'll be 12 volts divided by 60 ohms, and that gives us 0 0.2 amps. The graph shows the IV characteristics of the diode. The ammeter is 4.4 milliamps. Calculate the resistance of the diode and the variable resistor. The cell has negligible internal resistance. Okay, so we're trying to find the resistance of the diode and the resistance of the variable resistor. The current through the ammeter is 4.4 times 10 to minus 3 amps. Okay, that's because this is the positive end and this is the negative end, and current is flowing clockwise, and the diode is corrected the right way around, so it will let current flow through. Okay, because this is a series circuit, the current through the diode and current through the variable resistor will be the same. It's going to be 4.4 times 10 to minus 3 amps. Okay, so we need to find the potential difference across the diode and the potential difference across the variable resistor and we've been given this graph here so it makes sense to read information from the graph and that graph is for the diode so we can figure out the voltage across the diode by uh, finding the using the corresponding um, current okay so in this case 4.4 milliamps so this point here is 5 amps 5 milliamps sorry so 4.4 is going to be this point here because each square is going to be worth uh, 0 0.2. So if I read along that and then read down, and again be careful because now these 10 squares, 10 small squares, are going to be worth 0 0.5. So if 10 squares are going to be worth 0 0.5, um, yep, yeah, so 0 0.5 volts, that means one square 
will be what 0 0.05 volts and I have one two three four five six seven seven squares there so it's going to be seven which is um, times that by uh, seven zero point three five volts and add that on to the one that's already there so that's plus one so that means the voltage across here here it's going to be 1.35 volts okay so the diode has 1.35 volts across it so that means i can figure out the voltage across the variable is because it must add up to six so six minus 1.35 gives me 4.65 volts okay now that i know also i know the current through both of them because that's the same it's going to be 4.4 times to the minus 3 i can apply ohm's law to each one so 1.35 divided by 4.4 times to the minus 3 that gives me 307 ohms and if i do 4.65 divided by 4.4 times to the minus 3 that gives me 1057 ohms